Welcome to the Hottie Toddy Reader Spotlight brought to you by the University Libraries. I'm your host, Alex Watson, and today I'm joined by Dr. Ted Ownby. Uh, Dr. Ownby is the director of the Center for the Study of Southern Culture. Um, so tell us, Dr. Ownby, uh, what book are you recommending for us today? I thought about the, my first favorite book, which was Maurice Sendak's book, uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Uh, it was published in 1963, so it's uh, a book that was my favorite when I think I was five. I got it as a gift, and so my favorite book when I was five and six. So I thought about, and I've thought about this book at different points in my life, and I keep coming back to it, and I give it as gifts. And I thought it would be a, a, a good way to think about books and reading from uh, from the start of a life of books and reading. Excellent. So well, what did you find interesting about the book? Well, it's just a terrific book, first of all. It's, it's, it's simple, it's clear, uh, it's beautiful. It's a book where uh, a boy who's breaking all the rules, Max, uh, is sent up to bed without his supper. And there, either as a dream or um, in his imagination, um, or in the world that a book creates, he goes to another place, another society, another world um, in which um, uh, there are monsters, um, beings of unclear um, kind of identity. They have a party, um, the wild rumpus, which as a five-year-old and now as a 56-year-old is still a great term, the wild rumpus. Let the wild rumpus start. And the, and the, and the wild rumpus, um, is they howl at the moon, uh, they swing through the trees, uh, they dance together, a kind of interspecies, anti-species um, breaking of all rules. Um, and then in the end, Max realizes or decides um, he needs to go back home. And uh, um, he, he had been made king of the animals. He was the king of the wild rumpus. Um, you know, the kid is in charge. And then in the end, um, he goes back um, across the waves in a boat in a long, long trip, what seems to be taking uh, weeks and weeks, and finds that um, uh, in the end, uh, his, his supper is there next to his bed, and it's still warm. That's the, the, the end of the book. So, uh, so it's, it's an exciting book for, I mean, it was, a, it was a frightening book to a kid. My mother is a kindergarten teacher. She told me that uh, there are teachers and parents who are afraid that it's too scary, you know, being sent to bed without your, without your dinner. And more importantly, all of this rule breaking that goes on. Um, and there may be parents who are afraid of the wild rumpus taking place, you know, celebrating that in their own homes. It stuck out to me, you know, as a, as a kid, and it still does, as a great, clear, beautiful, exciting, but simple way of raising questions about rules and rule breaking. And the relationship between you know, life with rules, where Max knew he was not supposed to chase the dog, and he knew he was not supposed to um, mark up the walls and, um, and use everyday household items as target practice. Um, and, uh, and then this kind of, not anarchy, but this world of disorder uh, that he goes into and enjoys and is in charge of, and then in the end um, chooses to leave. Um, why, it excited, why it keeps exciting me is uh, that question of the relationship between rules and rule breaking. Um, is a scholarly question, and, and it's a great question that academics continue to ask, and parents and uh, people continue to ask. When I got to graduate school, I read this work of anthropology called The Ritual Process by Victor Turner, a great book, um, published just six years after Where the Wild Things Are. And Turner said, brief, I will oversimplify, I'm a historian, simplifying the work of a great anthropologist, he said that, uh, um, that life, life in a group, life in the group he was studying was a process between structure and anti-structure. And structure is clear. It's where there are rules and hierarchies and people know what to expect. Anti-structure is unclear. It is both the liminal of 
point of getting there, both place and time, too. And then, um, and then it's the kind of accepted breaking of rules. It's the accepted transgression, whether you call that catharsis or world turned upside down, or um, this this space in which people know that they are going outside of the rules that they normally have, just like Max did in, in, in this book. Um, part of what Turner says is so exciting is that sometimes, instead of saying there's ordinary reality and then there's life outside it, he said that life is this process of this back and forth. And that in the process, life changes because sometimes the moments of disorder and rule breaking become things that people want to break more. And then when the, the return to structure comes back with, you know, new ideas about sexuality or excess or, you know, the world turned upside down with the bottom rail on top. Um, so it's, uh, um, so uh, for Victor Turner, as for Maurice Sendek, that's not a stretch for me to, to say this, you know, thinking about books, thinking about society, thinking about life is about thinking about this relationship between um, places that are predictable and uh, places and times in life that, that are predictable and places and times in life that are uncertain. And, uh, but uh, that excited me, this sense of process, of back and forth, that, that society is not this and then you break free from that, but life is the process of return. Yeah, it's a book that's, uh, that's, that's absolutely relevant and it kicks off these questions and, and uh, um, um, you know, different people in different settings have the same questions, different disciplines have the same questions. You know, what's, what's the norm or how we define the norm, you know, usually set by rule makers. Um, and then what's the life outside that norm? Uh, but this is, this is the, the first kind of literary chance I had to think about those things. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts. Well, thanks for thinking about it. If you're interested in reading Where the Wild Things Are, you can check out a copy at the uh, J.D. Williams Library. Thank you for joining us today.